All right, so let's kind of talk a little bit more about resistance. So just to recap what we said on that previous slide there, um, we said the pressure gradient in the systemic circuit is much greater, larger, that 83 millimeters of mercury than the pressure gradient in the pulmonary circuit, which is about 14 millimeters of mercury. Although the flow winds up being equal because the pulmonary circuit has much less resistance. We'll talk about why in just a bit, but the pulmonary circuit doesn't need a higher gradient because it doesn't have to encounter as much resistance. Let's look at factors that affect resistance, okay? And we represent resistance uh, as this Q, this large Q. And the first factor that we wanna think about that uh, determines resistance is the radius of the vessel, which is represented by this small r. And so the radius of the vessel is how wide or narrow, right? How patent or collapsed is the lumen of that vessel. Now in our arteries and our arterioles, there is a lining of smooth muscle much more present in the arterial side. And so that is going to relax to make our arteries wider or larger, the lumen that is or that smooth muscle can contract. And when that smooth muscle contracts, the lumen of that artery becomes smaller. So arterioles and arteries have a way of regulating uh, their uh, internal lumen, the, the radius of their lumen, in order to regulate the amount of flow. Because as we decrease that radius, which means we constrict that vessel, we increase resistance. But if we uh, dilate that vessel or increase that lumen, we decrease resistance, we make it easier for blood to flow. The second factor is going to be the length of the vessel. We kind of talked about this earlier. This is represented by a large L. And so the length of, of the vessel is simply how far does this blood have to go? And as you would imagine, the further the blood has to go, the more resistance or impedance, the harder it is for that blood to flow through the system. Okay. Think about a, a vessel like the femoral artery versus a vessel like the pulmonary artery, right? The pulmonary artery, very short, very small artery. The femoral artery, very long artery, right? And so the longer that vessel is, the more resistance that's inside, the more resistance to flow, the shorter that vessel is, the less resistance to flow. The third factor is gonna be the, the, excuse me, the viscosity of the fluid. And in, in our case, the viscosity of our blood. And that's represented by this N sort of, this Greek symbol called eta. It's not actually an N, it's, it's a Greek symbol. Um, and so the blood viscosity can depend on different things, but mainly the number of red blood cells and protein that is present in our, uh, in our blood. Um, this is usually constant, but it does become a factor in things like anemia. In anemia, we have less red blood cells. And so we do have that, uh, that easier flow of blood, which can lead to bleeding disorders and so on. And then on the opposite end of that spectrum, things like polycythemia, polycythemia is an uh, a condition where there's too many red blood cells, it kind of clogs up the vessels and makes uh, the blood very viscous, very thick. And so it's really hard for that blood to flow through our vessels. And as you would imagine, that would be an impedance. That would be a, a factor of resistance to flow. And so uh, kind of comparing these three factors to what we see here in this uh, little schematic, the R is going to be the radius. That's going to be essentially the, the lumen, the size of the lumen. The viscosity is going to be how thick that liquid or blood is, and that's going to be uh, a factor as well. And then uh, the length of the vessel is going to be how long that vessel is. These are the three factors that uh, uh, determine or affect Q, which is our uh, flow. All right. So let's use this schematic here to talk about uh, resistance again and how that changes with different factors. So from side A here, um, to side B, we have two openings or two conduits. We've got this first one, A, and then we've got a second one, B. Now, the pressure in uh, the first container is uh, higher than the pressure in the second container. That gives us a differential of about, of about 40 millimeters of mercury. Um, and so what we'll see is that although we have the same pressure gradient, the same driving force, the rate of flow through conduit A is going to be higher, 20 milliliters per minute, whereas the rate of flow through conduit B is going to be less, 10 milliliters per minute. Can anyone look at this scenario and tell me why? Why, although we have the same driving force, we've got a slower rate through conduit B than we do through conduit A? Is it because B is thinner? Yep, so B is thinner. And what factor of resistance does that represent? That there's less area for the blood to flow through. 
Yep, so it's less area for the blood to flow. In other words, there's a smaller radius, right? There's a smaller uh, a lumen for that blood to move through, excellent. So because we see this smaller radius, that's gonna mean more resistance. And here where we see this larger radius, this larger lumen, if you will, if you can wanna compare this to our vasculature, um, because we have a wider lumen or a larger radius, we see less resistance. So with that in mind, what is the relationship between our pressure gradient and resistance? And what is the relationship between the radius and resistance? Let me rephrase that. So because we see a, a, a faster flow rate through conduit A and a slower flow rate through conduit B, how can we describe the relationship between the radius of this conduit and the overall uh, resistance in, the best, in, in this uh, conduit? So the radius to the resistance, how do we make that uh, relationship? Is it directly proportional? Is it inversely proportional? When the radius increases, what happens to the resistance? When the radius increases, the resistance decreases. Decreases, excellent. So someone mentioned in the comments that it uh, increases, but it actually decreases. The larger that, remember, think about it this in a very practical way and not kind of just memorize it. The larger the radius, the more room, right? The more room, the, the larger lumen uh, for blood to flow, therefore the less resistance. And so that's gonna be an inversely proportional relationship. The higher the, the excuse me, the larger the radius, the less the resistance, right? The less the impedance to flow, the easier it is for flow. On the other hand, the smaller the radius, the more resistance, okay? Less room for, for fluid or blood to move or to flow. And so it's gonna be more of an impedance to this flow. So the smaller the radius, the higher the resistance. So that's gonna be an inversely proportional relationship, okay? Whereas if we think about the pressure gradient, this is the first part of that question. If we think about the relationship between the pressure gradient and flow, it's gonna be a directly proportional relationship. The higher the pressure gradient, the more the flow. The lower the pressure gradient, the, the slower or the less the, the weight of flow is, okay? All right. Let's talk about uh, a law that governs flow and kind of how we calculate resistance. Oops. Now, one of the important laws that governs uh, resistance is called Poisson's law. Okay. Oops, let's make this. Okay. So Poisson's law, really named after the physicist that discovered this physical law, is the uh, equation that we use to uh, derive or uh, calculate resistance. And so we can say that resistance is equal to 8, which is a fixed number. This is always uh, standard or set, multiplied by the viscosity of the fluid. multiplied by the length of the conduit or vessel. And then we divide that by pi, also a fixed variable. So this can also be standard, multiplied by the radius, raised to the power four, okay? Kind of a complicated equation. Don't get too bogged down about, about um, excuse me, memorizing this. Um, what I really want us to focus on is the relationship that this uh, explains. So um, don't worry too much about memorizing this or any of the values here. What, what's really important is the relationship that we're gonna get to in a minute. So we can simplify this relationship by saying R equals H, which is that fixed value again, eta, which we said is the Greek symbol that represents viscosity, and this large L, which we said represents the length, and then we divide that by pi, also fixed, multiplied by the radius of that vessel, and then the radius will be raised to the power four. Okay, let me see here. 
Okay, so someone's asking about posting these images. Um, I can definitely do that. I've, I've been uh, not posting them previously, but I can start saving them and posting them with the recordings as well. That would be helpful, okay? Um, so we simplify this to say R, our resistance is equal to eight eta L divided by pi R to the power of four. Now, this is a, a simplified uh, equation that represents resistance. Going back to our main equation here of bulk flow. So let's put back our equation of bulk flow that we described earlier, which we said was delta P, in other words, our pressure gradient divided by that resistance. And so we can simply plug this relationship in for resistance, can't we? We can, right? So let's rewrite this to say, and this is getting quite, uh, uh, heavy with the math here, but don't worry too much. Um, if this isn't making sense, just kind of um, let me know. But don't worry about memorizing any of these either, right? So delta P we said divided by, let's plug in the relationship that we described here for the value of resistance. And that's gonna be eight, eta L divided by pi R to the four. And so because this isn't correct math, we're gonna rewrite this equation to be that our bulk flow is equal to delta P, our pressure gradient. We can simply transpose the uh, denominator here. So multiply this by pi R to the four, and then we divide eight eta L. So this is a truer reflection of, excuse me, bulk flow, okay? This is a truer equation to represent bulk flow. This is more detailed. Why is it more detailed? Because it actually shows us the variables, all of the variables that affect bulk flow. It doesn't just tell us resistance and kind of just lump all of the resistance into one value, but it actually breaks down those factors of resistance, right? The viscosity, the length, the radius. And so what we can deduce from this relationship is how each of these variables affects our bulk flow, okay? The variables at the bottom are going to be inversely proportional to bulk flow. The variables at the top are going to be directly proportional to bulk flow, right? Can everyone see that? Let me know if I've lost anyone with the math, okay? All right, so let's rewrite this relationship to represent or let's rewrite this to represent these relationships. Oh, I'm running out of time. So um, let's kind of just rewrite these at the bottom here. So bulk flow is directly proportional to delta P, our pressure gradient, and to R, which is the radius of the vessel, okay? pressure gradient, radius. Alternatively, bulk flow is inversely proportional to the variables at the bottom, which are our viscosity represented by eta and length, okay, the length of the vessel. And don't just think about memorizing these two sentences. Think about the relationship here. Think about explaining this or describing this in a practical way. The higher my pressure gradient and the higher the radius of my vessel, the more easily flow will happen. The higher my bulk flow, the faster the weight of that movement. The higher my viscosity and the longer or the, the, the greater distance of my vessel, the lower my bulk flow, okay? So while we can think about just lumping resistance into one general value, we can also break down that resistance and look at the variables that affect resistance and how those variables will in turn affect flow. All right, so I think we're gonna leave it there for today. Um, let me see what questions you may have. We do have a minute or so left. So if you've got any burning questions, um, okay, let's see here. You can go ahead and uh, put them in the chat. Okay, so someone's asking me to go over this one more time, which I can do quickly. Um, so just thinking about the equation here again, bulk flow is equal to delta P, our pressure gradient, which is essentially the differential from high to low pressure. 
uh, multiplied by pi r, which is really the radius of our vessel, um, divided by eight, eta, which is the viscosity, and uh, l, which is the length. And so what we can see, the relationship here between these variables and the overall bulk flow. So bulk flow is going to be directly proportional to the pressure gradient and the radius. If the pressure gradient goes up, bulk flow goes up. If the radius gets wider or larger, bulk flow goes up. If the viscosity gets wider, excuse me, gets uh, larger, if it, the blood becomes more viscous, then bulk flow goes down. If the length of the vessel becomes longer, bulk flow goes down. So there's a directly proportional relationship between pressure, radius, and bulk flow, whereas there's an inversely proportional relationship between eta, which is viscosity, the length of the vessel, and bulk flow, okay? All right, and again, don't be too bogged down with the equation. This is the most important relationship that I want you to focus on. And don't just memorize these two uh, sentences or these two uh, relationships here. Really understand in a practical way uh, why this is so, all right. 